Okay, guys, so here we are about to create our first SDL application. That's right. Same application that we created in the GLUT video. We're going to show you guys all of the differences that are required to utilize the same OpenGL code for the most part. Right. With a different Windows interface, SDL in this particular case. So, of course, there's going to be a few changes. And uh, you're going to see a lot of the code that we did in the last video or a couple of videos back. Right, the OpenGL specific stuff. Yeah, we're going to pull all of that stuff in straight from the GLUT video that we did. Now, what we'd like to do in starting this out is basically build you guys a very simple application. Right, we're going to just make it so the window displays. That's it. And we're going to walk through a ton of errors that you guys, t errors, warnings, etc., that you guys are going to see when we try to compile so that we can explain every single thing that the application is looking for in order to compile properly. Right. I mean, just throwing and saying, yes, we need this header file, this header file, this header file. People may not completely appreciate it. Exactly. So this way you guys are going to understand what kind of errors you can get if you forget these header files. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by adding one header file, suddenly you get new problems. Right. Because, I mean, not including one header file, you could get over 100 error messages. And I've seen a lot of programmers just totally freak out and go, <laughs> what's going on here? No. And then start hitting Google with questions. And if you understand the core things you need, then you'll be set to go. That's right. So we're going to build our way up by the end of our basic sample, which isn't right. the end of the video. Right. We'll have a window that's going to pop up, and it's going to be error and warning free. Right. And then from there, we're going to start taking a look at bringing over a lot of the code that we used over in the GLUT application so that we can then have a fully functional SDL application with a cube that we can manipulate with our keyboard. Exactly. So let's go ahead and create our new project. Because we need one. We need one. Um, but unlike the last one where we used a console project, in this one we're going to create a Win32 project. And let's go ahead and set this name to SDL Demo. Let's press OK. And as before, in Application Settings, let's do an empty project and click Finish on this guy. Create our source file, and we'll just call this SDL Demo. All right, the very first thing we need to do is include our SDL.h, because that's the oh, main that include sense. file. Yep. And then our int main. So let's go ahead and start creating our main function like we did in the last um, lesson. So int argc, and then we pass it the list of strings, argv. In fact, in the last one, I believe I did it this way. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So just whatever makes you happy. And, and then you can go ahead and jump down and do a return as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump down and say return one. Um, and in this one, there are two main things you need to do for initializing initializing <laughs> SDL. Right. Um, so the first thing is an SDL init init, and we're going to initialize the video. So init video. And then the second thing we need to do is initialize the video mode. So set video mode, and we need to pass it the width and the height, so we'll pass it window width and window height. Which, of course, we'll be defining in just a few minutes. Exactly, just like in the last lesson. And then we need, we want to initialize this as an OpenGL, all caps, as an OpenGL video mode. Mm -hmm. And so that's all we need to do there. And then finally, we need a quit. At the very end of the application, you need to tell SDL, clean everything up, get everything finalized, and quit. And you can do quit. this through the SDL underscore quit call. That's right. However, these two functions here, SDL init and SDL set video mode, can both not work. Right. Um, it, if something doesn't work well, OpenGL doesn't set for some reason, the video can't be initialized, we will get errors and we, we won't be able to continue the application if we can't even set up the ba most basic functions. So what we're going to do is check for this. If SDL init doesn't work, it will return a value that's less than zero. So we can simply say, if SDL init returns something that's less than zero, um, we're going to spit out error. <laughs> nice. And if SDL, this is going to actually return uh, a pointer. If this is equal to null, then spit out some other error. So spit out error. Now, finally, uh, we'll, we'll shoot in some errors in a second. Then. Yeah. Um, then after we've got this, you'll notice that it just initializes it, sets the video mode, and then quits. Um, that's not very much of an application. No. Uh, remember, with GLUT, we had our GLUT main loop call, right. which started handling all our events. It's a little bit different with SDL. We're it not going to pass control over to SDL. We always maintain control. That's right. Which is very cool, actually. And another reason why sometimes um, SDL is a little bit faster, because it's in one tight loop that manages all the events. So we can say, while 
and let's create a variable um, just called int done. While the application is not done, do a loop that loops and loops and loops until something happens, until we're supposed to exit. So we can say inside of here, um, create an SDL event, and we'll just call it event. And then we're going to pull for events. This is how a lot of the terminology for event handling is usually phrased, is while you're looping, you get an event, see if any events are in the queue, if you will, and then process each of those events as you get them. So we're going to say while SDL pull event and then pass it up the address of our event. So this loop, this internal loop, so we have an outside loop that keeps looping until the program is over, and then an inside loop that is going to happen, it keep looping until there's no more events to pull. So if it does get inside of here, event holds whatever event we're supposed to handle. And we can say something like if event.type, and you notice we have a whole bunch of things here, um, motion, key, so if it was a key event, get the keys associated with it and all that stuff. So if event.type is equal to STL quit, that means we want to quit the program. And then all we need to do to quit the program is set done equal to one. And then if there's that event, it's going to loop through, say that that's the event, not going to have any more messages left, quit this loop, go to here and say not done. Well, done is one, not one is zero, so it's going to loop out of this, go to SCL, quit, and the program's going to end. Right. So at this point, we can just go, that's it. And so that's a func completely functioning SDL program. Okay. Now the trick is getting it to actually compile. Yeah, there's quite a few things that we're going to need to do here. And the first thing is actually, before I forget, um, our window width and window height. This is going to bring up two more important things. So let's go ahead and type these out. Exactly like we did in the glut one. That sounds so weird, glut. <laughs> um, constant GL size. Let's go ahead and try to compile this. Okay, missing ding before identifier window width. That doesn't help us. This doesn't help us. This one, GL size I, constant object must be initialized if not extern. Constant int GL size redefinition. They don't know what GL size I is. And the reason for this is because we haven't included the GL header files. When we're using glut, it automatically includes GL.h and GLU.h. When using SDL, you have to manually include those. So all we need to do is throw in two more includes saying gl remember when we're looking in the library the include files in our in our actual .net um, include folder we had a gl folder inside that included all those three header files well after we added glut.h that's right um, so we have gl.h and include gl glu.h so if we add that in Whoa. You'll notice we get a whole bunch of errors. And like I was saying, I mean, this could be pretty scary for some people. Look at all those errors. And you're like, what's going on? Well, it's actually not that complicated. We have an API entry, WinGDI API, and that kind of throws to you that, oh, Windows something to do with stuff. Windows. That's yeah. Right. So we could just go in here and say include Windows.h. And this will get rid of most of the errors. Look at that. We are already up to linking errors. So all the the compiling did function properly. But here's the problem. When we're using something like SDL, which is a cross-platform window interface tool, not every, um, not every platform has a Windows.h. This is something that's specific to Windows. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to need to do is put in a preprocessor check that says, if defined Win32, include it. So we, remember when we were doing... Um, Things like if defined in an include file, in a, in a header file, we had if defined your file underscore age, define it, and then end if. Same idea here. If it's defined Win32, this is saying to the compiler, okay, we are compiling for Windows, then include this. And actually, we can go into the project for SDL demo. Just right click on SDL demo here, go into properties, and if we go into the general section, uh, I'm sorry. And to the preprocessor section here, we have our preprocessor definitions. These are things that are passed to the compiler when we're trying to compile our SDL demo.cpp file. And we have Win32, underscore debug, and underscore Windows. This is what we're looking for here. If this is passed to the compiler, we know that we're compiling for Windows. And then we're supposed to include Windows.h. Um, so let's go ahead and press OK on that, make sure this still works. All right, now how do we get rid of these linking errors? Let's go under the project settings again, go into the properties here, and go into the linker tab, go into input, and we have additional dependencies. Let's go under the um, 
uh, the folder for, our, oh, not this one, over in here, our SDL where we extracted all the files. If we go under lib here, you'll notice we have, aside from the DLL, we have sdl.lib and sdlmain.lib. These two library files need to be included, both of them need to be included for any SDL projects that you create. This is the main area, which is the int main, which handles all the main library functions. And this is where all the main calls are to sdl.dll. So let's go ahead and include both of these. Just copy the name, go back over to here, include this one, and SDL main. We try to compile this. All right, so it is already defined. This one's already defined. This one's a really hard one to track down if you're not familiar with what that means because it's not very descriptive right. at all. Um, so what you need to do is come over into C++, C, C++, code generation, and the runtime library used by the DLL is going to be multi-threaded DLL. This is using the um, the main library calls that are used, the runtime libraries used by when you're compiling your application, what kind it's using. Is it multi-threaded DLL, which means you have to have the Microsoft Visual Studio runtime libraries, or are you including it statically as a single multi-threaded, so it's not actually needing the DLL files. But since... Um, SDL is compiled to have a multi-threaded DLL file, you need to have the same ones, otherwise there's going to be a conflict. So let's go ahead and set that to that. So multi-threaded DLL, press OK to that, try to compile this, and bam, it works. So everything is good there. There's only one other problem. Um, we are currently don't have any GL function calls. So when we actually start using GL function calls, we're going to run into a few more linking errors. But let's go ahead and copy over the code that we had in the previous one okay. and so that we can actually have something to work with. So let's go back to our bingo development here. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and run it, why don't we? I almost forgot. Um, and check this out. Um, this application has failed to start because sdl.dll was not found. Remember I said you can either put sdl.dll in your system directory or in or your actual application, application folder. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So let's go ahead and come over to here, copy our DLL file, go into our SDL demo folder, and just put it in the debug folder at the moment. So when we run this, I think we actually have something. And notice that <laughs> it's completely not drawing anything. Right. And remember, that's because we have an open, just like with Glut, you need someone to tell the application to draw something. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any of that, so it's not drawing anything whatsoever. So if I move it down, move it back up, it's going to still draw random stuff. Exactly. But we do have a working app, and when I exit, it does, in fact, exit, so all is good. So let's go ahead and go to our Bingo development folder and copy over the code that we made in the Glut demo. So let's copy this over, and check this out. Remember, we said we have five main functions, and so let's go and ahead. we just don't want to type five main things again. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> definitely not. Make a vertex here and here and here and here. Woo, we have a quad. <laughs> now let's met. No, <laughs> it's uh -huh. the same stuff. Yes, it is. So we're going to grab the display FPS, init GL, establish projection matrix, tons of lines of code, copy that, go back into our SDL demo, and just put it right before our main. Um, let me just give you a short overview. So we got our established projection matrix. should be exactly the same as before. Our init GL, exactly the same as before. Um, display FPS, there's a few mm, things we're going to need to change changes, in here. Yeah. Because remember, we don't have Glut Get anymore. That's right. Um, our draw scene is going to be almost the same. Except for like one line. Except for that line right there. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then we're going to check our keys, which again is going to be a little bit different due to Glut Key Escape and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And otherwise it's going to be almost the same. And at this point, let's go ahead and start calling some of these in our main, in our main uh, function here. So we're going to need a init GL. Right after we've initialized the video mode and our init we've actually initialized STL, let's go into here and init GL and pass it our window width and our window height. And, of course, we need to, inside of our main loop, again, we're not using a timer, so we just need to call it right here. Mm -hmm. So let's call a draw scene. And that's going to call our draw scene, which is up here. Which is in charge of, yeah, everything that deals with drawing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Making the cube. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, right down there somewhere. Yes. Um, okay. So that works. Let's go ahead and start cleaning some of this up so that we don't get any weird errors. First thing, glut get, glut elapsed time. How do we fix this? 
Not a big problem. Well, not by using glut, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. What we're going to do is there's a SDL get ticks, which is going to return in milliseconds, just like glut elapsed time, mm-hmm. which is perfect. So we just need to replace this as well with SDL get ticks. And only one other place that needs changing is glut set window title. This needs to be changed over to SDL window set caption. So SDL WM set caption and then just pass it title. And it does require two things. The second one we'll just pass as null because we don't need to pass it anything special. And that should be it for this function. Notice we just changed SDL get ticks and Basically how we change the caption. Everything that said glut. Yeah, everything that said glut. I mean, it only makes sense. Yeah, it does. And then in the draw scene, simply change this <laughs> over to. This one's going to be funny. Oh, yeah. SDL GL swap buffers. Tough, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it just makes perfect sense. It does. Um, and finally, we have our check keys. This is a little bit different. Um, again, we just have our SDL. Oh, I was going to say get ticks for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. SDLK escape. Escape, yeah. And these are some constants or defines that are inside of their header files right. that allow for simple things like, I mean, we can't actually remember these numbers because they're like in the hundreds or something. Mm-hmm. So we have our SDL escape for the escape key. Um, we have our SDLK. Left, SDLK. right, up, and down. Yeah, it's real easy. Really simple. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> right, up, and down. I'm so impressed. I know you are. <laughs> um, I think that's almost everything except for one last thing, and that's inside of here we need to actually call. And remember, uh, let me just go back up here for a second. We're utilizing a keys array here. I don't remember defining a keys array, do you? No, it doesn't ring a bell. And that is a problem, because if we don't have a keys array, it's not going to work. So let's go back up to the very top here and define a keys array. Remember last time we defined a list of Booleans um, of 255 Booleans Mm -hmm. that said the key state. In this case, we're going to define an unsigned integer, 8, 8 bits, a pointer to it, and we're going to initialize it to null. And here's why. If I go all the way down to here, inside of our SDL poll event, we're going to set keys, which is what we just defined, to SDL get key state. And what's cool about this is it automatically returns to us the state of every single key. It returns a pointer so that when we access it, just like we did in GLUT, we can access the current state of every single key. And that's really, really awesome because with one simple call, unlike before where we had four different callbacks, um, with this one, just one line, and we got right. it set up. Very nice. And I think that is almost everything. Let me go ahead and compile this and see what we get. All right, so we have our cube, rotate, x, and y, yeah, not I don't really remember defining those either. So if we just come over to here, I'm going to be copy. lazy. <laughs> copy and paste these right here. Straight from the GLUT application. And compile this guy. And I spelled it wrong. Shh, don't say anything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. All right, sweet. This is what I was hoping to get. <laughs> lots and lots of errors. Notice they're all geo function calls. So again, don't let this kind of thing freak you out. Just remember, they're link errors. So go into the properties, the linker tab, input, OpenGL32 is not defined. So just go OpenGL32.lib, and we're done. Press OK. Um, GLU perspective, 32 not found. Simple. Just go into here. Properties, glu32.lib. I think I'm spelling that right. It'll let you know. Sweet. There you go. So there we go. Remember, uh, we have glu32.lib, ogl32.lib, sdl.lib, and sdlmain.lib. That's right. Just be sure to put those in, and you're set to go. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Wow. (laughs) So if we run this, oh, notice. Uh Uh-oh. Something's not Mm, working. The key's not working. So... Something's not working, so let's go ahead and figure out what it is. Well, I've already kind of seen what's not working. Where am I calling it? <laughs> That's kind of an important thing to do. Otherwise, you know, it's you not going to work. Just, you, need an, <laughs> you need an if and call check keys in there or something. Yeah. Remember before, let's let's go ahead and go to the glut demo if yeah, you Yeah, look at the same thing. Um, if we go to our time, <laughs> that that's really awesome. funny. That was awesome. You need basically that. <laughs> yep. Basically, we have an if check keys. Remember, if this returns true... 
then we want to exit. In right. this case, we don't need an exit, though, do we? We just no. need to set done equal done to, to one. one. and that'll jump us out of the just other Just like loop. right here. <laughs> That's so funny. That is funny. <laughs> I don't even call it. I wonder why it doesn't work. Um, so, well, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. If check check keys. keys. Very good. Okay, there we go. Now let's do it. Now everything's in good shape. All right, so if I just move this around, I look at that. So there you go. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. And with that, that's that's really easy. It is, but I'm not going to let you finish up here. All right. All right, so let's let's show them how to handle if you get any errors when we go to oh, yep. you know, just kind of clean things up a little bit. Very, very true. If we don't you know, have we this. Go to set the video mode, you know, what happens if things don't go our way. Right, and according to the, the way, this is kind of this, almost exactly the same way, in fact, that the SDL documentation is doing. All they're doing is printing out to a file, fprintf, mm -hmm. and they're printing it out to std error which is going to print out to an error file. In right. fact, I'll show you that in a second. So if it is unable to initialize the video, we'll just say unable to initial, initialize STL. And then we're going to pass it what error it is, so percent %s, well, um, which means pass it some sort of string. And that off. And there's a really convenient function called STL get error, which passes the error back, um, the last error. So if this shot out an error, STL get error will return in string form, whatever error was just hap that just mm -hmm. happened. And then, of course, if something happened, we can't continue the program, so let's just call exit 1. Okay. And we'll do the same thing for the other guy. But since this is step 2, we'll exit with a return code of 2, so that whoever debugs it will know that it stopped in the second one. Okay. And here we're going to unable to, let's see, what should this one be called? Unable to create OpenGL scene. Okay, OpenGL scene and then of course we're going to pass it whatever error it was dun, dun, dun. I still get error let's go and compile real quick yeah let's make sure that works Dunk. and it does so that's cool everything okay. is good um, let's see actually there's two other things that I'm just going to kind of point out here let me go to my check keys here and you'll notice that what if this is going to be called constantly? Mm -hmm. And what if what if it gets called too quickly? Let's say we have someone whose um, screen hertz are set to like 150. Mm -hmm. The cube is going to rotate at a faster speed. Right. This is something we didn't do in the glut demo, but I just figured this is a much more possibility for games because when we're using SDL, the whole point is speed and for games. Right. Um, so in this one, what we're going to do is make sure that we control the speed of the queue by keeping track, like we did inside of the display FPS, the amount of time that has passed. So what we're going to do is create a static function, uh, a static local variable called long last time, and we're going to get the tick count. Uh, just to keep track of that. And then we're going to get the new time on every new loop. So new time. Just like in the display FPS function. Get ticks. So if new time minus last time is greater than, let's say, 10. So after 10 milliseconds, we do want it to update. Mm -hmm. And actually, let's make this a constant, just in case we want to change it later, because I'm, I'm suspecting that may be a little too slow. Um, so let's call this floats uh, update time. Sounds good. Actually, we can make this a, a long, since it's going to be in milliseconds anyway. Um, we'll set that to 10. And we just replace 10 with that. It's never good to throw in magic numbers anywhere. It's bad practice. So let's go ahead and do that. Compile, make sure that works. And in our case, you're not going to see too much of a difference. I mean, it works exactly the same as before. But like I said, just in case this fluctuates too much or you don't have the frames per second capped, this cube would spin really, really fast. And, right. of course, we don't want that. So that's that. There's one final thing that I'm going to throw in as an extra bonus. <laughs> um, at the very top here, when we're defining our OpenGL header files... Actually, let's back up before that. How about yeah. when including Windows.h? Oh, actually, yeah, good <laughs> point. There's there's one little... It might be slow for some of you guys. That's right. When we're including Windows.h, Windows.h is a very, very large header file. In fact, if I can open this up here... Um, it may seem pretty small, but it's including a lot a of header files. A lot of things, Tons yes. and tons of stuff everywhere. But notice... If defined Win32 lean and mean, if, if not defined, then include all of these. Mm -hmm. So if we define it, it's going to strip out a lot of extra stuff that we, that don't, we need. don't need. Exactly. Right. 
So if we go into here, let's copy and paste, copy this. Let's go ahead and define, not twice, <laughs> define Win32 leaning. And again, this is defining a preprocessor definition that tells Windows.h to not include all that extra stuff because we, we don't, don't need it. it. Exactly. Hey, you're skilling my words. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay, we're going to get one little extra error by doing this one thing because we added exit one. Okay. Exit one is not defined. So we've got another include. We, we have throw one in other include. We have our include std lib. In fact, I think we did that in the glut one as well. Let me just make I'm sure. I'm almost positive we did. Yep. Oh, stdio. Oh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and compile this, and shebang. There Very it goes. Nice. So let's go ahead and make sure it still works, because, you know, I might have broken something. And nope. looks nice. All is good. Okay, now for the one final bonus feature. Ah, yes, that's yes, right. Yes. Um, um, we're using Windows.h and by uh, Windows, excuse me, and so by default we're going to always have GL under GL.h. Mm -hmm. um, if you're using something like a Macintosh, um, ah. then you're going to have a different include names by default. So we're going to add another if defined section. So if defined Apple. Trying to keep cross platform in, in mind. mind. That's right. It's very important. And then. Mark. Then we're going to include the same two files, but they're named a little bit differently. They're gl.h under an OpenGL folder, and include OpenGL glu.h. Otherwise, I mean, if we're not using an Apple or a, a this thing, <laughs> however you say that, yeah. um, we're going to include it as this. Otherwise, we're just going to include it by yeah. default. In fact, in Linux as well, you use these two. Indent that a little. Oh, I will. I'm going to include an end if as well. <laughs> you can do it. I, I can do it. Yay! Look at that. Uh, there we go. Very nice. So let me make sure this still compiles and works. Awesome. So I think with that, we yeah, pretty that, much have everything. That covers everything. Fantastic job, Joel, as Thank always. You. And guys, as you can see, taking, uh, taking an OpenGL application from glut over to SDL, just basically changing our Windows interface, really did not require a much lot of work. to be changed. Mm -hmm. no, it was really just being aware of how to handle all of the different things that the compiler and the linker is looking for right. in order for it to be put together properly. But outside of that, that's it for SDL. So thank you guys very much.